Did I ever tell you about the time I got my things caught in the door? Oh, what? You thought I was done talking about the Mike Myers Cat in the Hat movie? Hell no, man. You can't just stop at the video game. This movie needs to be explored for the bizarre piece that it is, and thankfully, we're picking back up again once more. In my review for the game based on the movie, I mentioned I grew up loving the movie, but as I got older, I realized what a betrayal against Dr. Seuss it was, as is any other film of his work that's been greenlit. I liked it as a kid because I never associated it with the book, and let's be honest, guys, our perceptions as children are so small because we don't know good from bad. But nowadays, the movie gives me a lot of nostalgia, and I watch it for that reason, as well as loving it ironically with how it gets every note wrong, with Mike Myers mugging it up, Alec Baldwin playing the villain that never existed in the book, and the jokes. Oh wow, the jokes. Dirty ho. Oh. That's my mom. Awkward. <laughs> And truth be told, jokes like that made me think this movie was rated PG-13 for the longest time up until I was like in middle school. I know that sounds pretty far-fetched, but if you were to ever watch the deleted scenes from this movie like I did growing up, you would think the same thing. And unlike the scenes you're about to see, I didn't actually play the game until the year I made the review of it. But I was raised upon these deleted scenes the same way I was the movie. And let me just say, you're about to see some weird ass shit. So let's get to it. The first one is an extended scene of the cat determining the kid's personalities, but before he uses the funometer from the movie, he gives them a basic checkup like a doctor would. Uh -huh. How many cigars are you smoking a day? Now I'm not saying stop, I'm saying cut down. Uh -huh. A lot of this scene, as well as many other scenes you're gonna see, are just sort of Mike Myers goofing around and mugging to the camera while cartoon sound effects overlap. <laughs> But one of these gags feels so out of place that for some reason it always made my brother and I laugh. Ow! Ow! I think just how Spencer Breslin's pain sounds so realistic in this very cartoony scene just kills me. Imagine putting it in other animated segments. <laughs> The next scene, again, is an extension of another scene where the cat is singing the fun song. No, not that one. That one isn't ugly enough. In this one, he's dressed as a bullfighter and trying not to say a curse word in a Dr. Seuss movie. She liked to be the teacher's pet, always the head of the class. It took a ton of TNT to kill the bug up her ass. Yeah. You know, honestly, I can't say I'm surprised since the final cut had a similar joke about, um... This. He never used a litter box, he made a mess in the house. That's why they sent him to a vet who cut off both his boo. 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 Yeah, it's just as weird looking at it. But so was this. Ask me, was she fun? Fun, fun. Not a chance you can't have fun. 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 You know, even if they gave the effects the full treatment to actually make it in the movie, it would still look like shit. But then again, it's about as good as the ADR singer who crept in for the notes that Mike Myers couldn't hit. Fun, fun, fun. If you're uptight, so loosen up and lose those lists. Life isn't such a riddle. If the movie didn't make it clear enough that he was neutered, I'd say it sounds like the bar had him grabbed by the balls. Right in a Kanyigin. God damn it! Oh! I'm gonna make this one short and sweet. Cat sees their dog Nevins and gets scared. It can be best described as everyone's reaction to the original Sonic movie trailer. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh. Meow. I'm not the... That's no good. Oh, nice bitch, huh? This next one takes place during the scene where Cat unleashes Thing 1 and Thing 2, and they start causing mayhem and ruining the house. And their talking fish, who's about as uptight and brown-nosed as Zazu, decides to call their mom, played by Kelly Preston, to get their attention. And yeah, the dead eyes in that prop fish will haunt my dreams forever. Who is this? Well, let's just say it's someone you know. Someone who sits in dirty water watching you all day. Listen, you perv, I've got two kids and a mortgage. Why don't you go harass someone else? I'm not harassing you, you stupid When in the movie does she ever have time to play a Game Boy Advance? Half the time she's in the movie, she's out tending to her kids, but I can assume she's on her lunch break taking her stress out on some superstar saga. Like a champ. But then that's followed up by the scariest thing I've ever seen before in my life. Hello? Ah! Jesus, I'm only a few scenes in, and I've given you guys enough nightmare fuel to last a fortnight. If this were my house, I'd be furious. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time I got my things caught in the door? Oh, is that how you got your neutered license? You're a sick man, cat. Sick. Cat man. You're a sick man. You suck. 
To keep this one brief, this is when the kids and the cat first exit the house to catch their annoying dog after he escapes. But this one is just extra padding with the cat pogo jumping. Listen to the guy who walks around with the sound effect of a cartoon erection. <laughs> Hey kids, um, I know this is fun and all, but you have to catch that dog and get that lock or else your house is gonna turn into a universal attraction. Immediately following that scene is a small chase scene involving the kids jumping over the fences to catch the dog while the cat is doing his usual mugging. And yeah, the fence jumping was funnier when Hot Fuzz did it. So yeah, you can skip this one if you want, unless you want to see something very PG-13. OH MY GOODNESS! SQUIDWARD! You are practically showing a full naked body shot of Kelly Preston. You are a Dr. Seuss movie, not Jerry Maguire. And hey, what if her husband were to see this? What do you think he would say? Wait, you get licking. Hot. You know, I expect that from the guy who said yes to the fanatic. I gotta poo. I'm sending Conrad away. The next scene on this list is just about the longest, as it's a scene that nowhere near resembles anything in the movie, and it goes on for about five minutes. But it feels even longer because the following deleted scene picks up exactly right where this one left off. So both of them together stretch out to over eight minutes long, and damn, that's a lot of padding. In the final cut of the film, Alec Baldwin catches the dog and tries to bring it to their mom's work to showcase her son's irresponsibility and be forced to send him to military school. I know that sounds stupid, but it makes sense if you've seen the first half of the film. But then again, since this is a Dr. Seuss product, it's even more stupid. So let it go. But in this deleted scene, the film likes to take a detour to have Alec Baldwin make a down payment on a home theater to replace Spencer Breslin's room. Because movie. In the original, they got the dog back with a lame hippie gag that didn't last more than a minute. Get out of my way, you hippie freak. Then boom, chase scene and Paris Hilton. Because movie. Show me the biggest screen you've got. That is the last time anyone was aroused by Alec Baldwin. Soak it in, Alec. Cherish it while it lasts. So he decides to tie up the dog and hide him while he makes the business deal. The kids rescue Nevins just in time while Mike Myers does his usual mugging. I'm on TV! I'm on TV! But Alec Baldwin comes back, so instead of just running out of the store without him noticing they were there, they just hide in obvious spots where they can be seen and the cat disguises himself as a pelt rug, as the next two minutes just have him be subjected to physical pain. Okay, I hate to keep throwing this movie a bone, but this scene was probably cut because they reused it early in the movie, and again, it was barely on screen for a minute. Even if they did keep in the- well, you know, it was short. You know, not to mention, there's absolutely no reason throughout the whole movie to have the cat disguise himself as anyone or anything but himself because he's constantly in public running around with the kids or driving around in a vehicle causing traffic disruption and property damage while everyone in town just walks by not noticing anything and just goes about their day. Is the cat just like a manifestation of the kid's imaginations or something that Alec Baldwin can see too because he's just a kid that never really grew up who also sees him? Okay, yeah, I know, I'm really overanalyzing this, but even if that does make sense, it's still stupid. You're stupid. The next scene has the group narrowly escaping Alec Baldwin when they make their way through some weird cat in the hat rave that is still the most out of context, never explained, and never addressed scene in almost any movie I've ever seen before. The party scene itself is just an extension of the one in the movie, however what follows is the true bread and butter of this movie's middle finger to Dr. Seuss. Ow. Ladies and gentlemen, the cat in the hat just rimmed himself. The Grinch said kiss my ass, Horton is a weeb, Sam I am did duck lips, and the cat in the hat rimmed himself. Here's your childhood, it's going, it's going, and... Okay, this next one is the most fascinating of them all. So, in the movie, the cat and the kids are racing home to get there before the mom realizes they're gone, and Spencer Breslin tells Thing 1 and Thing 2 to keep her busy to buy them some time. In the movie, they disguise themselves as police officers and do... Police, 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 police,
this, but before that, they made an interesting decision. Thing 1 and Thing 2 stage a flood to block off the road the mom is on, and interestingly enough, this scene has three variations of it. To keep things classy, let's go in order and dissect them. The first thing you see is Thing 1 after it just finished drinking hundreds of bottles of water. Oh, please, you're not. Never make that face again. You're giving a Higao artist a run for their money. See that flood water? See it? That came straight from a thing's dick. I reiterate. As for the second variation, the things decide to use magic tablets to make the flood happen instead, with a whole bunch of natural disasters. Okay, thankfully it didn't come out of their bodies this time, but why do the things have these? Do they just have natural disasters for the sake of the plot, or are they just some sort of anarchists? This case they keep them in isn't even the same ones that are in the first two shots it's seen in. The first shot has a tablet labeled Vermin, which first off is bad enough alongside things like blizzard, flood, hurricane, earthquake, locust, fire, and tornado, but in the second shot, the vermin one is replaced with explosive diarrhea. Why would you ever need that? What are you, you Seuss inbred freaks? And if that wasn't enough, the third flood isn't made through bodily fluids or magic, but they blow up a dam. Okay, no, that little trickle of water is not what the aftermath would look like. It would look like this. Okay, before we take a break from all that insanity, let's close this off with the final deleted scene. The mom dumps Alec Baldwin and all is well with the kids. Yes. <laughs> and this scene without the whimsy music is downright awkward. Hold still while I kick the tar out of you. Christ, he mistreats this dog like those boys from Elfin Lead. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bother showing you the clip. You know what I'm talking about, and if you don't, don't look it up. Ah! Let go! Let go of my leg! Let go of my leg! Alec Baldwin's credibility was lost faster than Brendan Fraser in Furry Vengeance. Christ, I've been doing this channel for four years. Have I still haven't talked about that movie yet? Thanks for the cupcakes, Sally. Little girl, do you know what's in those cupcakes? They taste like dog <laughs> Okay, let's take a deep breath and chill out. Those were all the deleted scenes that almost made it into the final cut of the Cat in the Hat movie. And after seeing all those, can you understand why I thought this movie was PG-13? These are littered with crude humor that doesn't fit the style of Seuss at all, much like the actual movie. But in that one, you didn't have to see bodily fluids from a thing, the Cat in the Hat licking his own round tables, and Alec Baldwin's underwear. It really shows here why Dr. Seuss's widow canceled all live action adaptations of his books. Not to say the animated ones to follow did it much better, especially since two of them are from Illumination. I hate you! I hate you! And not long ago, it was announced that they bought the rights to make a new animated reboot of The Cat in the Hat, so we can only imagine how bad that'll be. But I can't imagine it'll be as far away from the book as this Mike Myers film was. Maybe Illumination will learn from the mistakes of this film the same way they kinda did with the Jim Carrey one. Those two are kind of a pick your poison type. And if you want to check out the movie or the scenes come from the movie for shits and giggles, check it out and see for yourself. I think just how Spencer Breslin's pain. <laughs> <laughs>